This is American Professor Richard D. Wolf, Professor of Economics. Listen to what he's going to say. I didn't say it. He did. You know, you have to remember, for those of you that are not Americans, try to understand the, the peculiarity of this society. It is now owned and operated by descendants of Europeans. What I'm about to say should be understood particularly well in Brazil, for example, because there's similarity. Here. So the Europeans come and they kill all the local people. They murder them. Violent, destructive, ethnic cleansing, uh, genocide, all apply. And it took a century or two in this country, U.S., to kill them all, with the few that are left stuck on reservations, which is a kind of genocide, only it goes slowly. And so it doesn't offend you, so obviously. So the country is born in, a, in its modern form in an unspeakable violence that is everywhere. Northeast, South, West, Midwest, it's everywhere at different times. But the slaughter of the indigenous population is the history of this country in its first 200 years, to be before and after independence. It, it's extraordinary. And the next major phenomena is having destroyed the indigenous population, you took the indigenous people of Africa and brought them here as slaves to do what? And that for a huge part of the country, and remember, slavery existed in New York, in Ohio, all over, not just the American South. The history of New York City is, if you want, where I live, I live in New York City, the history of New York City is full of slave chapters of the importance of slavery in New York City. Okay, a country that is born in genocide and then graduates to become a slave. It's just a, what do you, and, and we're not that far away from that. Slavery only ended, you know, a century and a half ago, a little more. That's not very long in historical time. This is a country that identified its survival as dependent on mass murder in the not-so-distant past. Wow. Wow, indeed.